Here's a circa 1941 or 42 silver tone battery operated tube radio. These were often called farm radios because they were mainly used by rural customers on farms and in other rural locations that did not have electricity. So they had these battery operated sets that usually ran on 1.5 volts and 90 volts with one and a half volts being for the tube filament and 90 volts being for the B plus voltage or plate voltage for the tubes. Back then the battery packs consisted of a big giant monster that contained a 1.5 volt section and a 90 volt section. Well obviously those battery packs haven't been made in at least 40 years. So in today's world we have three main options for powering these types of radios. The first option is to build an AC power supply using modern solid state components. We usually build these around an LM317 voltage regulator IC for filament voltage regulation. Or you can obtain an old battery eliminator from the 40s or 50s. This is an earlier form of AC power supply but does not contain the voltage regulating circuitry that a modern power supply would contain. Or you can build a battery pack using modern batteries. And here's a crude one that I put together this afternoon. I purchased the battery holders from Radio Shack and the batteries I purchased from the dollar store for the 1.5 volt section I have two D cell batteries wired in parallel to give greater current capacity because these tube filaments are real power hogs and and you really want something that will stand up to the current demands now for the B batteries I have 10 9 volt transistor batteries daisy chained in series and for those I used the cheapest batteries available at the dollar store which were a dollar a battery I couldn't afford what Radio Shack wanted for 9 volt batteries so went with the dollar store brand and the current draw on the B plus voltage is you know, on the B plus battery is very minimal so those batteries shouldn't last a long time in comparison to the two D cells for the filament voltage which will have to be replaced much sooner. Got my milliamp meter connected in the filament supply. Turn the radio on and see how much current we're drawing. This is a five tube set. So we're drawing around 250 milliamps. And around the outfield for all this, from left to right, is Mathis, Crossfield, and Jameson. Underway here in the top half of the first inning, one down. The wind up of the pitch by Laxer, and it's high outside. This program is presented by the. One ball on the count. In the city council, would they postpone this election or would they postpone this qualifying date? And they said no. And that was our new R&B station. Apparently, they've got some clown on it every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. He's purchased airtime there. And to be concerned a little more. And listening to him is quite laughable, but that's a subject for another video. Blood in there. Well, we're not raising enough fuss about War Three. Maybe the citizens of War Three need to go to their council person. And right. ask her to speak up and ask her what to be only right. And that switch is a 
economizer switch that is supposed to cut down on battery drain but it also cuts down on amplification too with that switch activated we're drawing around 210 milliamps which all that does is cut power to the tube filaments. I'm gonna take a little break right now. Give y'all a little something to listen to, sweet to your ears. We'll be right back. Okay, we'll now insert our milliamp meter in the B plus line and see how much current that's drawing. And here we are in the B plus circuit measuring the current draw and that's only around 10.7 milliamps. We'll just round that up to 11 milliamps, so that's not too bad. Like I said, the filament batteries will go dead a lot sooner than these B plus batteries. Here's the back of the radio. Can't really see it too well. I'll tell you what, let me get this out in some light where we can see it better. Here's the inside of the radio in better light. You can see it better. This is a five tube set. And one interesting thing is the tuning arrangement. This set doesn't use a variable capacitor like most radios. This is inductor tuned has a powdered iron core that that moves in and out of a coil. I believe this concept is known as permeability tuning. And actually I've seen a lot of silver tone battery radios that employed this arrangement. Okay, there you go, my nineteen forty one silver tone battery radio. And here's a closer look at the battery pack. I made no effort to make this thing look pretty or make it compact. Obviously it could be made smaller and if you were using this in a portable suitcase style tube radio you would probably want to make it smaller. Like I said earlier I got the battery holders from Radio Shack and the batteries came from Dollar General. This plug I salvaged off of an old Ever Ready battery that I had that of course was dead and if anybody knows a source for this type of plug I would really appreciate it because that would come in handy for building power supplies and battery packs because 95 percent of the farm radios from the late 30s through the early 50s use this type of plug and this mounting board is part of what's left of that console stereo that I made the crash and bash video of last night. Okay, there you go, my battery pack and my 1941-42 Silvertone Farm Radio. Thanks for watching and more to come later.